Nerds International proudly presents. Uh, yep, I'm here. Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm here. Oh, I'm here, baby. Um, uh, yes. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 3T RPG podcast. I'm Harrison Hunt. And I'm Nick Lamley. This is an RPG podcast all about tabletop RPGs. Yes, indeed. Today, we've got the best show since sliced show. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> since condensed show. We're not from Concentrate. We're all organic. 100% fresh squeezed. <laughs> I should point out. I should point out. I t- I, as I told Nick earlier, um, I took some sleeping tablets last night. Then woke up early, and I'm fairly certain they haven't quite worn off yet. So he's a bit. He's a bit woozy. I feel, uh, I feel drunk. He's still drunk. I'll travel back from Nottingham yesterday, so I'm shattered. So it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Low energy. All right. <laughs> Low energy. High. No, I was going to say. Low energy, high profit. <laughs> That's <laughs> about that. <laughs> high cringe. No, no, But no. today we've got what you've been saying where we talk about what we've been playing. We've got the main subject, which is going to be how to role play well, how to improve your role playing. I haven't decided on the title yet. <laughs> then we've got what that, followed by monster blind day, <laughs> then RPG or beef, a new segment. <laughs> Followed by <laughs> followed by electro letters. Yay. Woohoo. Should we do it? Should we yeah, get into get it? In there. Let's get right in. And mm. one of these. Oi. Yeah? What you slaying? So this is what you slaying where we talk about what we've been playing. Nick, tell me about your Cthulhu game that you Ooh, ran. Okay, yeah, so um whilst Harrison was globe trotting to America and enjoying Con on the Cob on my basketball um, career. And your basketball career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's been he's been called up. Uh, new sign in. No, uh, so yeah, while uh, while Harrison was away in America, um I uh, uh I, I said that I would do a couple of um, standby games in the gap. And um yeah, so this time around again we I went for a, a modern Cthulhu, um trying to get a little bit of use out of my Kickstarter. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, so I um, this is from the um, <clears throat> Fear Sharp Little Needles, which was published by Stiggin Fox. It was a Kickstarter that came out a little while ago, and it's very good. And uh, so I went for this time um, a it was called Poetry Night. It's nice. quite a cool one actually. I'm glad that you missed it because I think you really really enjoyed it. But the um, basically the the investigators are uh, they go up to a kind of like a mountain top kind of artisan. Uh, bohemian society. Oh right, right. where um, you know everyone's an artist, everyone's a poet, and all this kind of stuff, and everyone's quite nice to each other and that. And uh, they have a poetry night that's quite well, fam- well, world famous, and people come you know on holiday to holiday there and enjoy this poetry night. Anyway, little did they know that there was uh, there was there was evil things afoot, and um, the actual uh, one of the actual poets uh, was actually reciting a, a ancient evil uh, kind of rite of passage that transported the whole poetry uh, the cafe this kind of uh, super hipster cafe to another dimension um and and basically yeah for this kind of deep uh, dark you know old one and um and the, the investigators had to kind of try and figure out where the hell they were and how to get back and um, that was kind of the whole premise of the story so it was them stuck in a, in a in a coffee shop that got transported to another evil dimension if you like that sounds amazing it was really good fun actually and they all got to do a bit of poetry and, and you reused the pregens from the last time I you did, played so it's yeah. like their second adventure precisely and I kept it in the same timeline so it kind of continued so the one where they all survived well except for James' character who was sadly retired due to the fact that he had no legs anymore Okay, uh, but he had a very nice care package apparently so it was all good so he got <laughs> <laughs> after and then we had one new character but apart from that the old characters yeah knew each other so we can I continued the the kind of arc if you like and um, yeah hopefully you can get a, have a go in it as well because it's um, there's plenty in the book and I'm going to keep using the same characters so well um, I think our Deadlands campaign that we're playing is it will be coming to an end fairly soon Gutted. so yeah. yeah so the thing is once that's over you should run another one of those uh, in the break maybe yeah just, sure absolutely can... yeah I'd love to yeah 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 definitely because I always love playing play. Cthulhu but I don't get the chance enough nowadays to play it I used no. to complain about about playing Play it too, too much. often <laughs> yeah. yeah well it's nice and it's modern as well so it's fun so you know like library uses um, you know quite, you can get your phone out and use your phone or use stuff, computer which is yeah. quite fun or a computer well they couldn't because all their phones got stolen there was one scene that I loved um, from the book um, which I just wanted to tell you because I thought it was really really cool but the way the uh, so the guy when he's doing this kind of poem that starts the ritual up it does all that and part of the um, part of the ritual it requires a blood sacrifice mm. so what the guy does is, is he actually <laughs> 
shoots himself in the head um, once he finishes his delivery of the poem. But what kind of really stuck with me is the fact that the body doesn't drop. So as the kind of world gets transported after this final sacrifice, his body just stands there, like standing up still, just kind of floating midair with his brains all up the back of the wall. And it was so grim, but I just thought it was such a cool kind of visual. That is awesome. And I loved it, yeah. And obviously, the, and the thing, the, way, the only way they can get back is to do the ritual again, which requires a blood sacrifice. So if they, you know, if there's no one left other than the party, it's the same thing again. You know, someone's going to die. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, That's really cool. Luckily, they didn't, and none of the uh, party got killed through sacrifice. There was actually some NPCs that were able to get killed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God for that. Yeah. yeah. That's but no, awesome. it was good fun. I think the boys enjoyed it. So, yeah, it was good. Check it out. Um, yeah, so Fears, Fears Sharp Little Needles. Uh, Sounds go great, check man. Check the book out, man. It's very good. In addition to that, we've been playing Deadlands Dark Tower. Oh, mate. And I feel like for listeners that have only tuned in this episode, I'll give a really quick explanation as to what Dark Tower is. It's a novel by Stephen King, well, a, a set of novels, mm-hmm. and it's it's basically a sci-fi cowboy western uh, fantasy post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. book set yep. mashup. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. it's basically the the every universe ever is on a different level of the Dark Tower, yep. and the one that they adventure on is the one closest to the Prim, which is the primordial chaos that birthed the Earth, mm-hmm. and as a result, things are really weird. And the, the, instead of gravity, the world is held up by these beams guided by animals, and those are starting to quake, starting to break down, and the tower is is starting to die, and so mm-hmm. they, they have to get to the tower to save it. Oh boy. And that's basically what, what we're doing, but at the moment, so they've been travelling across the land trying to get to the Dark Tower, doing encounters and things like this, and one of the things was they went to this city called Ludd, one of them got kidnapped, they saved him, then they went on a, a sentient talking train who was suicidal. Yep, And then, Blaine. um Yeah, because the, the closer you get to the tower, the weirder things Crazier get. Crazier stuff gets, yeah. But last, last session they did uh, an encounter from the Stephen King book, Wolves of the Caller. Yes. Um, and what was really cool about that was we, we demoed not only Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, but also the... Uh, uh, mass battle rules oh my god and they're cracking <laughs> yeah because there's this bit in um, in the Stephen King book where essentially the way we're playing it is instead of it being a mashup of all of Stephen King's properties it's all of our games exactly yeah that's it and there's a bit in Stephen King's book where and this isn't this isn't a joke but out of this like tear on reality uh, a bunch of uh, Doctor Dooms riding horses with golden snitches and lightsabers come <laughs> yeah. out and start attacking yeah. this town of women. <laughs> Completely accurate. And the women, the only thing, this might be sexist, but I'm not sure, but the only way, the way the women fight is by throwing sharpened plates. Arises. Yeah, yeah, yeah mate. Arises. Yeah, mate. And, um, yeah, so we did this battle where, where Nick, he, he was the main leader, mm-hmm. and you get to, like, he makes battle roles for the whole whole sort of party and everyone yep. else can wade into the combat and help out mm-hmm. and we had Sean flying around with his jetpack whilst just uh, drop it oh yeah he was hold- no, yeah, holding uh, Jimmy while he was firing off chi hadoukens at people <laughs> <wasn't he? laughs> yeah yeah so yeah he was, he was firing off spells we had James on the roof sniping setting up traps Sean was chucking dynamite from the there jetpack. was nets and um, all, all the while Nick Nick's character Luther he's a wizard he's on the roof commanding everybody telling them what to do and there's this, this battle it took Eight hours of actual time, not yeah, in game. Yeah, 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 yeah. Game took about half an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like it, eight hours of constant fighting against these weird things called the Dick Wolves. The Dick Wolves. Yeah, but it was. I'll tell you what. It was an intense as balls experience, and I must say, um, the the whole mass combat. Um, like system for the new Savage Worlds is cracking. It's fantastic. You get these two big wads of tokens, and they kind of represent how you well you're doing against the enemy, and it's just represented really well and exciting as hell. It's yeah, really you, really good. I like the way you get like extra <clears throat> points for because you can get extra points for like having a clever plan yeah. or by um, by any cool actions that you take and things like this. Mm-hmm. And so they started off with a 7 to 10 loss. So That's they had it, 7 yeah. tokens, the other guys had 10. That represents how big your army is. Yep. And then what happened was, over the battle, like even in the first two turns, they mitigated the minus by doing clever plans. And mm-hmm. you guys did such a good job that essentially you were outnumbered, but you really, really outplanned the people that were coming through. Oh, it was great. And if you enjoy, as a player, if you enjoy planning, and I'm sure a lot of you do, because it's a really far, fun part of RPGs, you will absolutely love this new uh, this new edition. Yeah, Swade's good. First imp- first impressions, I'm, I'm, yeah, I really like Sean, it. Yeah, Sean liked it as well. He was on the last podcast, and he, mm-hmm. he said it, he's really enjoying the changes and stuff. So mm. we'll probably do an adventure edition review I think we should, at yeah. some point. We'll play it a bit more, get, an, get yeah. more of a, a bit of grasp on it, and then we'll, we'll do a full episode. On it because I think it's really good. Maybe get Sean on as well because yeah, we should. Three yeah, of us are all playing it. But yeah, so far so good. Very good. Well done, Peter. But you know what I um, uh, uh, really enjoyed 
last last session was the fact that and this isn't me doing this this is actually from dark tower but basically you remember there was a point in the game right where the characters realized that they might be fictional <laughs> and essentially what happens is, yeah. is that they they there's all these tears in reality and they use one to visit 90s london yeah and find that the the tower there because there's a dark tower equivalent in every world mm-hmm. um is a rpg shop That's called, right, yeah. called tower rpgs, tower RPGs. And it's, it's owned by a guy called calvin tower yeah and uh yeah they go in and this guy's like no cosplayers allowed. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Luther and Luther and uh, uh, James's character, what's his name? Long Iron. L- Luther and Long Iron. They go into the shop, and he's like, "Ah, oh, yeah, look, good, good cosplay, mate, but your, you know, the gun's a bit too big, and yeah, your hat's the wrong type of hat." Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he wears a ten gallon hat, not an eight gallon. hat. And then they go in and they see this RPG written by me, me and Nick with Deadlands, <laughs> a Dark Tower story or something yeah, like this. Yeah. And so <clears throat> what they do is to try and try and um, make sure that. To, to, to try and save the universe they go visit the writers which were like old versions of, of me us. and Nick yeah. Fat, yeah 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 I'm like we we're both de- decrepit Aye! and <laughs> all of them are like getting really angry and they're, they're like Look, write a good ending man I was like, no, we're too busy. We, we were all wrapped up in space. What was it space prostitutes or it was something? Suppose, something like that. It was like <laughs> no one wants that no more. They want space adventures with space prostitutes. Yeah, that was or it. whatever it was. But yeah, you know, and, yeah. And so they tried to get them to change or well, to write an ending. Start writing again, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, of that, of that, that, that particular uh, fantasy. Our, our game, if you yeah. Like. yeah. So <clears> they're, they're starting to realise the world. The reason the world is is crumbling is because the writers had stopped writing. Yeah, uh, but they did use that to get an advantage in in the. The, um, in the the mass oh, of battle, of course we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we had we was allowed we was given the opportunity to basically um, influence the story. So it's uh, in, in a way where we told you know ourselves, if you like, within the game to write in a certain way about the Dick Wolf. So it gave us an advantage. And we was thinking for ages, and loads of crazy ideas were coming out. But what so, did we settle on? Well, some of them were. You, you guys were like, okay, we can get them to write whatever we want. Say they're made out of cotton wool. Make <laughs> yeah, make them water. No, make them scared of, it, of humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what they did in the end is they made them suicidal. So <laughs> which wasn't a great idea. It really. was. I thought it was quite a good idea, but it meant that they fought recklessly without yeah, planning. Yeah. So that that was that was the advantage. We thought they might all just run off a, a cliff like lemmings, but no, 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 no. It was more kamikaze. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like that. They they just ran in with reckless abandon so yeah. it was a pretty good idea it was I, fun I think the one where you said uh, make them be made out of water was pretty funny because it, you, it, the idea I think that whoever said that was thinking was that they would immediately get through the portal and just turn into a puddle <laughs> just wash out but I yeah. was thinking more of like a water elemental or something oh, like that shit, right yeah yeah. you can't yeah. hit them because they're moving around <laughs> Yeah. Well, oh you, man. That, I know no because I know you. I knew no matter what advantage in air quotes we got there would be a big payoff for it. Like, you know, there's still you because no matter how much you can word something because but one thing was like, oh, make them all dead. It's like what? So a load of zombie ones come out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cuz <laughs> I reckon the battle was still going to happen because they wouldn't it, think about it. If you're telling two RPG writers to to change an encounter in your <laughs> game, right? You wouldn't go like um, okay, they wouldn't put an encounter in there where everything comes through a portal and they're already dead. Yeah, oh, they wouldn't be in the. <laughs> Can you imagine just a load of corpses just start piling out of the portal and that's it. <laughs> 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 That'd be terrible. But no, yeah, it was. It was. Um... Well, for me, it's double great because obviously, um, one is played Deadlands for a long time. So glad that I did now because it's great. But part of me just wonders whether because I love the Dark Tower so much. Um, uh, personally, I think it should that should be the new thing now. It should be Deadlands Dark Tower because <laughs> it works so well. I think people need to just completely rewrite it and make it the, the Dark Tower world. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the cool thing about that is what they could do if Pinnacle <clears throat> made a Dark Tower setting, or they could just call it like the Shadow Building, yeah, <laughs> just to avoid copyright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just loosely based on the Dark Tower, but it could be a Deadlands supplement where all the other Pinnacle properties are involved. Mate. That would actually be pretty good, right? Mate, I'll tell you, you got Flash Gordon, Solomon Kane turning up. Shane, if you're listening, mate. Yeah, I know he is. Speak to our he, agent because he nicked our idea recently. What? Well, he, remember we were telling him to sort his uh, sort his act out and make bookmarks and <laughs> useful stuff on there. He's only got that. He owes us some money, Nick. <laughs> I actually I made another point. Creative, uh, hello. I did a panel at Con on the Cob, yes. and I made another very good point there. Right, I think that the that you know Chuck Tingle, right? Oh, of course. I think the first ever 
time where him and RPGs were mentioned in the same sentence was on our podcast. Us, mate. And we, we did that years ago. Yeah, it was... That was it like was lit- two and a half years ago. I think it was about three and a half. Oh, we, mate. We're owed, we're owed a lot of Are money. Are we the Simpsons? Are we predicting shit? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got you remember it right when here. we said that Trump was going to be president? Yeah, mate. So, Net- so, well. See? Well. <laughs> see? <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. So, yeah, if you need any kind of fortune telling, um, send us uh, send us uh, an email. Ma- we'll do it silver. Or oh, silver, yeah. Cross our palms with silver and we tell you. You we'll do it we'll do, do it. it yeah all right well that's what we've been playing <laughs> oh, god these get shorter and shorter this uh segment why did i not start talking about the actual product it's, it's, until 20 minutes in well it's always new people that are new yeah. to listening yeah, to yeah, it come on. Like, it took you 25 minutes to get to the fucking main subject so we're building up a rapport yeah with you, dear come listener on. come on you got you come on mate come on mate it's not just about rpgs well it is well it is <laughs> <laughs> right main subject right, let's go on. let's go mate Subject ma- ma- magic main. Subject Tokyo main. Subject. Hello. You were in the main subject. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Oh, it's nice and here, isn't it? Oh, we forgot to talk about Jimmy the Sandal. Maybe it'll come up later. Oh, we're, 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 <laughs> shit. we just have to get him in there somewhere. Right. Anyway, today we're talking about uh, improving your role playing, becoming a better role player. And I'll tell you why. I kind of thought of this segment mm. in general was because I essentially I, I'm a GM most of the time, right? So whenever I get to role play, I think I'm a bit shit. <laughs> and, and the thing is, <laughs> no, in fact, I know I am. I know I, I spoke about this um, last last podcast actually because yeah. I was playing in a game of Beasts and Barbarians where I played a character who I thought I was going to do a really good job of, and I really fucking bungled it. <laughs> I mean, I had a good time playing him, but it was essentially this uh, African war. Lord type guy yeah. with the heroic edge, but okay. we were all bad guys, so right. it was it was like really difficult for me to play, and I don't think I did a very good job. And often when I role play, I think I end up doing quite a bad job anyway. <laughs> I don't know, nah, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't I, I'm not. That. I'm nowhere near as good as you guys. <laughs> oh, I know that. Up. But the thing about it is, is that. Um, yeah, like uh, obviously, I know I know what makes a good role player. Yeah, it's just when I sit down and try and do it, I fuck it up. Your brain just goes. Uh-huh. <laughs> so what, what I'm going to do is is like so. What I, I thought of was we could kind of go through some tips and things to improve your role playing. Absolutely. And hopefully by the end of this show, I'll be a better role player. You'll be able to be a player. Exactly. <laughs> well, I am that already. I'm a player. I'm a baller. <laughs> you just need to be a ten foot taller. Yeah. Well, okay. it actually reminds me that it's completely off topic. But my, I just got an invite to a school reunion recently. Oh shit! It's been fifteen years. That's got nightmare written all over it. I know, and I, I, I put a comment on it and just said I can't tell if this is a horrible idea or not, but it is a good chance for me to boast about my professional tennis career. <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So let's talk about improving your role playing. Let's First thing I wanted to, to mention was that. Defining a character as simple on paper, on a character sheet, right? You could put down edges, hindrances, your, or in the case of D&D, your flaws and whatever the fuck else it's called. Mm. Your stats and all of this and have a great picture in your head. But playing it is really different to just having a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, and there, there is a, a, ver- a very good couple of reasons for this. And I think that often for example some people and this is this is a direct reference to a character and you might know who this is but like if you're going to play a smart elf with his nose high in the air who's like a noble um posho right but you can't play that it's a great idea on paper but the thing is is that let's say for example if you're the type of character who who isn't that witty or, or type of person that's not that witty or has trouble coming up with these things then you're going to have trouble like actually playing a character. Of course you are. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. If you want to play a super sharp character, but your own personality isn't that sharp in regards to, I don't know, you know, quick quips or whatever, you're going to struggle because it's still you playing a character. What you're going to end up with is people going, I roll intimidation. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to intimidate them. Oh. But what you want to do is like, ah, and actually play it out, right? Yeah, so you yeah, want to exactly. hear it. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's a good tip, you know? I mean, because the thing is, we've talked about how to make good characters before, but it's actually then playing the character mm. is, is the hard bit. And like you say, Whenever you roll persuasion or or a bluffing check or anything like this, don't just go. I use bluff. I use yeah. Persuasion. No. Yeah. No. I, I guess it. I guess it's what we could say then is kind of accept your own limitations. So it's not a case of you're not a good player because it's no way. It's just finding the right fit for you. So for me, exactly. So I haven't got that much experience in old fantasy, right? I haven't read that many fantasy books. So the language of fantasy for me is quite difficult. So even though I'm playing an old wizard. 
I find it quite difficult to be able to talk ye old, you know, because I don't know it that well to structure the sentences. So often, more often than not, Luther at the moment will talk quite normally, yeah. even though he's from a fantasy world, because I'm not great at the... Well, that works, though. I mean, of, look um, at, little look, things in that. Look at Discworld. That, all, all of those people, they just talk normal. Yeah. Normal. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, I think that's perfectly reasonable. Yeah. The thing is, you're already leagues ahead anyway, because uh, you have an English accent. Precisely. So it makes it <laughs> so, easier. Yeah. Apparently, uh, some people told me in America that, that American people, when they want to sound smart in a game, they do a British accent. <laughs> and it's like... <laughs> but American people do British accents, they're like... It's so bad. Some of them are so bad. Well, I ran to Tough Guys, which is a British gangster scene. <laughs> I, I insisted that people do British accents, yeah, of right? Hello, and mate! There was a, there was, it was mostly <laughs> like that, yeah. So, go on in. I'm the, going to get me some sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who's got a tea? Terry, uh, he was at the table and he was he was doing an intimidation check, I think it was. And he was, he, he was like... Mate, I'm gonna fucking fuck you up, brother. And he was talking in an American accent. I was like, British accent, anyways. Uh, uh, mate, I'm gonna fuck you up, brother. And it, was, it was exactly the same, but just a slightly different voice. <laughs> oh, Terry. Brilliant. But yeah, so uh, if you, yeah, try to play a character that you know you can actually play. Yeah. There's certain characters that, that people just can't gel with. Yeah, and, sure. And try to pick one that you can. Yeah, 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 totally. But one of my biggest tips as well for better role playing is act as if you were really there. I mean, oh my God, you'd yeah, be surprised how many people don't do that, you know? I mean... <laughs> the whole idea of what we do, right? Well, that's it. But then I guess people would take more genuine risks, which is fun, and if the system allows it, good. Mm. But, like, they take more risks. They, I, I've seen people talk, talk to other characters in the game in ways they would never do. Nobody would ever do because they're in a game. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. you often see... How many times do you see, like somebody will come up to a character and go oh thank you so much for saving my village I haven't got much but here's this bag of gold and the character goes but have you got any more stuff yeah what else you got what else you got can I have some more stuff it just turns into uh, polite-ish mugging a lot of the time and always it's like people. it's always money it's always everyone's always after fake money and I think we've talked about this before but yeah it's like the fake money and it'll be like people get in a fight with somebody over getting a discount in a shop. Oh, my God. And I've seen, I've seen players die yeah, doing that. we have. And the thing is, it's like sometimes you, they can't get it. It's like, yeah, but he was a dick. It's like, hold on a minute. You bowled into his shop, five of you. Some of us, like someone's shoplifted out the back. You're trying to barter him down to nothing. He's got kids to feed and you get the ump because he gets the ump with you. Yeah. And kicks you out of the shop. <laughs> and <laughs> Come that's, on. That's what, that's what I'm talking <clears throat> about. It's, it's really weird and nobody would ever behave that way. In no. real life, someone being a dick isn't justification for killing them. Killing them, them. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or getting the final word. It's like, dude, drop it. Come on, you've had, you've lost this. Your character, your fictional character, has lost an argument with a shopkeeper. Move on with your life. But your think, fictional life I in think the game. That's the problem, isn't it? It's the word lost. People don't like to. They lose. don't like to lose. And because it's a game, which it is, <laughs> yeah. like they see a failed uh, interaction with a shopkeeper as like a loss. A loss. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I ain't losing. Like, I ain't having that. Just as they leave, they burn his fucking shop oh, down. No, I hate it. I yeah. hate it. How many times in games over the years have I gone? So we're doing this then. Yeah, okay. I know. All that's right. it. We're doing this. Sir. It's always it, 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 there's one player at our table. I know he doesn't listen to this, but it's it, there's one player at our table that he's always that guy where it's like, well, guess this is happening now, and it's like, <laughs> get with it or get out of here. <laughs> it's like oh, this, this pub. They're not doing me a discount. Time to start a fire. I've got to burn it down. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> anyway, yeah. But so you act as if you were really there, and Precisely, what I mean is yeah. actually do it. Don't just imagine it. That's that's only half the battle. Imagine it, then act as if it was you. It was yeah, your yeah. money. It was yeah, your yeah. reputation on the line. Yep. Um, that that way you'll always end up with better role playing. And uh, another thing is give yourself some stakes in the world. Oh, totally, yeah. Uh, and I don't mean delicious T-bones. Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. But like, say for example, how many, how many characters have you seen specifically like, well, in, in any, any role-playing system where there's for some reason parentless... Brotherless, sisterless hobos that don't have a home <laughs> or you know? any kind of direction. Yeah, Why exactly. are you here? I don't know. <laughs> don't know. Just here, not like I mean. It, it, say for example, you're running the Barrow Maze as a campaign, yeah. right? Yeah, you're there to plunder and get treasure and explore the Barrow Mounds, but um, what? Why? Why are they who's there? The, who's the money for? Why yeah. are you getting it? And don't just go because I want to be rich. I mean, yeah. no, no, no. Why are you putting your life on the line? You could go steal people, steal people, <laughs> steal people. kidnap people. You could do that as well to make money. Or you could just be a thief if you want to make money. Why are you specifically going into a deadly dark dungeon called the Barrow Mazes? There's got to be more to it than that. Yeah, because there's obviously going to be more gold there and you you need it for something. Yeah. And you might will... have a massive debt. That makes it interesting. Like, you know? I remember I took over a character when I was playing D&D &D 5e. I took over a character 
from, that somebody had previously used. And he was saying that I, apparently the reason I was in the town that we were all adventuring out of mm. was because there was a, a guy that killed my brother that was in that town, okay. in a big city, like, yeah, yeah. A bit like Lankmar or something yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it sort of gave my character role-playing opportunities and it gave me a reason like... I want to get more money so I can hire mercenaries to find this fucker. Mm. I I need money to live, but my real mission is in the town. So Mm -hmm. whenever I got back to town, it gave me... We'd all split up, all of our characters, and we'd do some more role-playing. And I'd I'd be going into bars asking, have you seen a guy with one finger? And things like that. Not one finger, that'd be crazy. (laughs) Missing one finger. (laughs) (laughs) He's over there. Yeah, no, that's it. And it gives it... It gives you kind of... You need drive, that's the word, isn't it? You need some drive that's not specifically the campaign that you're playing in and the thing is it, to role play that drive well I'd say the way you go about it is is that instead of it just being a note on your character sheet bring mm. it up in conversations yeah. don't make it don't, don't interrupt constantly about it but at the same time have it always in the background yeah because let's say for example you go into a den of giant spiders yep. and you end up with webs on you and it's because the reason you're adventuring is because you're searching for your lost brother and you go god there's things I do for family yeah, it yeah. could be things like that yep yep and that, that brings me on to another point is um, this is probably the most cringy of all the points but the thing is is that like you said with your oldie woldie speak a lot yep. of people struggle to do that mm-hmm. and people will make characters like elves like nobles but struggle with a, with actually talking like one yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't just mean putting on a voice I mean like actually doing like like saying the type of things they would say the, the patter yeah exactly yes. yeah and uh, I saw I've been doing a lot of research about this particular topic and somebody said have certain catchphrases like how does your character respond when uh, when saying something positively instead of just saying yes sir he goes he might say by the gods it yeah. will be done yeah, or that's something it. like this precisely yeah 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 and yeah. just come up with the little things like this and if you have them on your sheet and then you're you, before you know it you'll be using them all the time yeah like if you're playing like a gangster game a sci-fi game you can have all these little little things that's that why we can... often put lexicons in our games yes yeah we do like like in whacked in the wicket it has it has a lexicon in there so mm-hmm. you can have certain phrases and things to say but if you but don't, try to memorize them and practice them yeah. and practice your voice and uh, rather than have them on a sheet at the table because yeah. we had a player do that once where he tried to play a Japanese character and <laughs> he, he just had a bunch of Japanese phrases and then somebody would say something to him like let's go for a shopkeeper example again he'd be like thank you for your custom and then the guy would be looking down at his, his little sheet going what the, what the fuck is thank you in Japanese but you don't you don't need the sheet if you're going to have those phrases memorise them yeah yeah you know yeah, what I mean totally yeah yeah it, it was like looks down at his sheet pause 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 arigato <laughs> whereas he could have just got away with thank you yeah yeah exactly just as good because he's got an accent yeah totally no, I totally agree with you. It's like when we used to do um, foreign beggars, and if uh, if I, I'd, I'd, God, if there was a microphone inside my car, people would think I was absolutely mental because as I was driving down to, the, to to yours to record, I'd be doing Grimm's voice over and over again because a couple of weeks you forget, and it's and it's easy I, to lose that kind of um, that that thing. That so yeah, well, it's funny because you notice in that actual play how much Grimm's voice changes from the beginning <laughs> yeah. to the end. He, it's like and that was with he practice. Gets, he gets more and more gruff. <laughs> yeah, by the end, kind of talk. At the beginning, he's like. Do you think we should uh, go in? One must look close. And by the end, you're like, right, mate. But he got really old. He was like 90 by the end. <laughs> oh, no, I think he was older than that. Than that. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. he's a hobbit. But yeah. he, was, he was fucking old. <laughs> oh, mate. Um, but yeah, that that I, I also practice just when I'm doing the washing up and shit yeah, like yeah, this. Which, I do. Uh, it's but only when my wife is out, obviously. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. Yeah. Uh, it's cringe, but uh, it does help your role playing. And you're, and you're, and you know what? You'll thank yourself at the table because when all your mates have huge smiles on their faces or they burst out in laughter because you've just come back with the perfect response, I'm looking at you, Sean. Um, <laughs> you know, it's well worth it. So do it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. And you're, like your character who you're playing at the moment, Luther, is fantastic for that type of thing because he's <laughs> he's he's like the one evil character in a party of otherwise good characters <laughs> yeah. but he's he's so um he's got such a like a uh, blase attitude to everything <laughs> yeah. that it means that whenever that whenever the guys like do something you uh, like you were talking about last week your character was talking about uh, enslaving children yeah and yeah, keeping yeah. them as part of a dark army acolytes yeah yeah and then another character says to him he, he and then you're also talking about like getting monsters and training them up and <laughs> another character an npc says to you he goes so you're in the business of Getting evil monsters and using them. 
And you're like, yes, I'm <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I love it. He's so, so nonchalant. It's uh, it's a fun. He's a fun player to but play. He's, player he's obviously play. like you've got certain ideas of how to play him in your head, and yeah. and the voice is very well done. And thank you. It's obviously practice, so yeah. it does it does pay dividends to practice. Oh, I would just definitely say. But the next yeah. one I wanted to talk about was things like flaws, stats, and redeeming traits. So, yes. Like often, most systems will have. I, I know they call them flaws in D and D, and I can't remember what the other thing is. It's like flaws in good one, or good betters, good betters. But yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, most systems will have it, like hindrances and edges, yeah. but, or uh, advances, advantages and disadvantages. Precisely, yeah. Pros and cons to your character. But yeah. how to play these well, mm-hmm. right? So um, th- the thing about them is often those types of. Uh, character qualities are really open to interpretation. Yeah, there's a reason in Savage Worlds, for example, one hindrance is mean, and that can that can literally be be anything. It doesn't mean that your character is constantly a dick. Well, I was just about to say, yeah, and it's the same as like greedy, I guess. You know, just because your character's greedy doesn't mean that at every given opportunity that person will either try to steal something or take more. It's like you know, I I might class myself as a greedy person, but I don't. I wouldn't say that I'm greedy in every aspect of my life. Well, yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because but you know you will have a big plate of food when you have yeah, food. You sure. know, so things yeah. like this. But it could be like, yeah, the greedy thing. It could be yes, it could be that you steal more loot from the dungeon. It's subjective, or though, it, isn't it? It could, it could be, be. It could be that just that you will argue about your fair share because you think you've done more work than everyone. else. And you always do. You always reckon you've put more graft in than everybody like, else. We've yeah. got two hundred gold pieces. I think half of that's mine because and yeah. that that could be what it is. So it means that that players will dislike you it doesn't mean that you steal from other players all the time because you know you're defined by the fact you've got this hindrance no no no, no. yeah that's that's a much more interesting way of playing yeah it. and same goes for mean when you take the mean hindrance or whatever the equivalent is in in your game that you play mm-hmm. you, it could be that you you hate old people i was just about to say or you just you're mean to kids because i don't know a kid was really horrible to you one time and for from then on children you're just mean to them because you don't like them it doesn't mean you have, you're a mean person Completely, yeah, and I've uh, literally seen it at tables where where players will just it, they it, they it gives them carte blanche to to be a dick to everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the curious edge, and they'd be like, "Well, I'm going to jump down that hole because I'm curious." It's like, but you're not. You're still rational. <laughs> the curious edge could be that you, whenever you see a tomb. You never leave it unplundered. Exactly. Or the curious could be that you ask too many questions about people because you always want to get a gauge on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And then they become suspicious of you. Exactly. It could, it could be. It could be anything like that. But when it becomes, when it comes down to playing it well, it's got to be more than just a word. You got to yeah, think yeah, why, yeah. how, and then execute it properly in the game. Totally agree with uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. And, and absolutely. It's... And also the positives as well. You know, um, it's the same for that. You know, if you're courageous, your character can still get scared sometimes. Yeah, because you could have. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a good <clears throat> example because Dave of Rave. Yeah. Sure. Dave of Rave. Yeah. Sean's character in Deadlands. He's got um, the brave edge. Yeah. And because he he was uh, originally from our Cthulhu games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what I think is that he, the way that he can play brave, it doesn't mean that you never curtail in the face of anything. No, well, he's also a pacifist. Yes, yes. So he he will never fight. But well, the explain th- the perfect scene yesterday, uh, last game. It was absolutely fantastic. I've never seen a pacifist play one so well. The imaginary sword. Oh the threat, God, just that the was threat of a sword. That was so funny because he's got this. Uh, uh, edge called Rebel Yell, yeah. and it means that he can you, do taunt rolls on on a burst template, and or uh, on a child called uh, Jimmy the Sandal. Jimmy the Sandal. So <laughs> essentially, <laughs> I'll, I'll explain this because it is quite funny. But it's got to be told. What happened was is that um, they, they previously went through to our world and killed a gangster called Jimmy the Shoe, and uh, now uh, the, his son has taken ownership of the of the gang and he's very very young and now he's going around uh, collecting all the debts that Jimmy the Shoe had let fall <laughs> under, the, under the table you know yeah. and uh, his son's called Jimmy the Sandal and uh, he's, he's like this child gangster he's about 12 or 13 <laughs> <laughs> he's pulling like, his braces yeah pulling his braces like wearing, wearing his Bugsy Malone he's like oh you're oh, fucked now my. motherfuckers and he, yeah, and he pull a gun on me will ya pull oh. a gun, yeah pull a gun on me oh you're in real trouble now son <laughs> 
<laughs> and um, yeah, essentially what Sean did, he he, he, tra- he did this taunt oh, roll, and because Dave's a pacifist yeah. and never carries a weapon, mm-hmm. he wanted to intimidate them with a weapon, yep. but he turned in a way that l- made it look like he was drawing a sword from his hip, yep. but he didn't. Then he emerged from around the corner, and he, he, he's like, you don't want to see me get me samurai sword out, mate? He's <laughs> mate, mate, look, I don't want to get it out, but I will if I have to, alright, mate? And then he rolled a 27, <laughs> and Jimmy, Jimmy the Sandal's like, whoa, come on, son, there ain't no need for Don't bring a sword to a gunfight. <laughs> It was so good. It was so good. Just but, get the shit out of him with it. That's a, that, that's a good example of an interest. I mean, he was fucking stupid. <laughs> that but that's, fantastic. that's a good example of how to play how to play an edge. Because you're a pacifist, you don't carry a weapon, but you realise that the, the, this there's only one way this guy listens to. You You've got to get into combat as well. That's the thing. It's the nature of role playing. We have combat um, instances, and you know, but playing a pacifist is a challenge. And fair play to Sean, but look how rewarding it can be. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just it, man. It is. It is great. Um, because he's it was originally your character, but mm. you you had a rule that you'd never hurt anyone. Mm, yeah. and there was one point where you had to kill a dog, oh <laughs> and he absolutely hated it. Oh my god, poor Dave! But I think yeah, when when you get these flaws or <laughs> redeeming traits or anything like this, you have to you have to think of an interesting way to play them. Don't yeah. just go, I'm brave, and then I'm not scared. Go, go, I'm brave, but I'm only that means I'm only scared by certain things. Challenge or, yourself, you know, like that's that's a really fun part of character creation and playing characters. It's like, you know, if you just play the same kind of character, like that meme I sent you the other day when it's just the same character, but he's got one of them gla- pair of glasses. I was like, I'm here to avenge my brother. <laughs> oh, and yeah. it's just like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, come on, every time you start a new game, that's a great opportunity to try something new. Luther was a prime example, because often or not, I'd play quite, not courageous characters, but righteous characters, Yeah, you play, you, play gu- you play good guys. Good guys, right. Yeah. So I got to a point where I was like, you know, I really want to try something new. I really like the idea of trying, not a, a, an out-and-out evil character, but of course a character that's had such a sheltered life, they just don't understand. So they're only really in it for their self and 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 I'm so glad I did because it just broadens your kind of uh, portfolio of character playing I guess totally and um, yeah I mean if, if we're talking about games that don't have edges and hindrances and uh, those types of things uh, just just basically apply the same technique to your stats right yeah yeah, the yeah. thing is is let's uh, take for example uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess or DCC where your character is basically your stats yeah there's also a million ways to interpret a good in, uh, intelligence score or there is. wisdom yeah. wisdom yeah, yeah. Be, you know be it could be street smarts it could be that you're old it could be that you're if you've got high intelligence that you're you're learned um, again like on the streets that's right or book smarts or it could be that you're in really really intelligent about one specific subject yeah, you, and, and you have you no know everything they know you you know everything there is to know about kicking somebody but that is it yeah <laughs> you're 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 an absolute like scholar when it comes to kicking ass but that's the only thing you know but it's true i mean and you're right like if there isn't edges and hindrances, you know, like you said, you can you can get a pretty gauge, a good gauge on a character just by looking at their numbers. You know, high strength, uh, low intelligence, right? You have got a bit of an idea going on there. Or like you said, look at them all, and you can you can you can get a character from the numbers. It tells you what kind of yeah, a person well, they exactly. are physically, at least, you know, and mentally, and like just from your numbers. Well, charisma score kind of de- and and wisdom those yeah, kind of denote yeah, yeah. your personality as well because. A charisma score, a high one. It could be that you're a smooth talker. It mm-hmm. could be that you're extremely good looking. It yeah. could be that you're you're always well. Yeah, you open your mouth, you're like, oh, right, but because you look so good, people will still talk to you. Hello. But if you open your mouth, it's gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh, uh, bigger role. Um, but yeah, it's exactly. So yeah, there's a lot more right. to it than that, isn't there? Next point is though, dynamic growth, yeah. learning and evolving. Your character, this is a simple one, and everyone knows this one, but your character, if you want to do better role play, change based on the things that have happened to you. Oh my god, yeah, like people, treat them as, like, they're not, it's not a piece of paper, remember, think of it as a living, breathing thing, and, you know, piece of papers, pieces of paper can stay the same forever, but people don't, they change, and and just be conscious of that when you're, you know, if you, if, if the world that you're playing in is giving you a lot of shit, and when you first started you were all he- like happy and and go lucky, by the end of it you're probably gonna be grizzled and pissed off. Yeah, you might want to. If the world's giving you shit, you might want to give it some shit right back. back. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, prime example in our Deadlands campaign that we're running at the moment, Ryan. He um, his worst fear was to see his brother die. Oh my god! Yeah. And then he saw his brother die, and now he's 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 voluntarily taken the slow hindrance because yeah. he carries his brother's coffin on his back. He does, yeah. And yeah. he's he's tried to make his character darker based on the fact that 
that he 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 hasn't got a life anymore. Well, he's not as chatty anymore. Like because he, he used to bubble off and bounce off his brother all the time, so they'd start chatting away and they'd have these great little kind he, of. He was um, also always scenes. in a great mood because yeah. he's he's a charismatic wrestler. Yeah, and exactly. The thing is, yeah, he there was a point last last week when you guys came into this world mm. and um, when you met the writers, one of them was like, one of them was like, "Do you speak Korean?" <laughs> I mean, ever since Kim Jong Il took over England, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, we mainly speak Korean, and he's just like, "Listen, buddy, well, we, I can understand you, you can understand me, so let's get on with the conversation." <laughs> yeah. And he's, before he would have just been like, "What's Korean or something like this?" Yeah, so exactly. Yeah, I'm a pretty smart guy, but I don't know this. But now, yeah, he's uh, he's not like the old one. No, he's 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 gone a bit dark. But it's a great, it's it's a pleasure to see. So it yeah, pan out. Make sure your character grows, learns, and evolves. Yeah, you know? totally, totally agree with that. Yeah. And uh, start with a goal as well. I mean, this goes into the stakes thing, but start with a goal, you know. Yeah. Um, it's basically the same advice as I've given, but but try to achieve that goal. Yeah. Yes, of course, you've got the probably that you have to save the world from this, that, or the other going on. Yeah. But also have you have this sub goal that you can do during downtime or... And your GM will absolutely love you for it. Exactly. Because, because it, it gives them more to work with. Yeah. Totally. You know, your little backstory, there was a small little part of your backstory that grew huge in Gen Lab Alpha. Oh, God, yeah. That yeah. Was, uh, but that's because I had the opportunity to have that. I could glean that from you guys. You know, give me, give, give a GM little nugget of information that's to do with their character and they can use it to make it cool and then that might come up in the story later yeah, on. Yeah, because we had an adventure, literally a, a, a session and a half based on my character's backstory because I bothered to put it in there. I yeah. added a yeah, little yeah. detail into the world that my um, family was killed while uh, I was asleep during a rainstorm. And the mm-hmm. only thing I saw was that the man had a peg leg. That's right. Exactly that. And he was, un- uh, uh, like, unbelievably fast. And then they, it turns out that he was, like, this really... He was an abomination, wasn't he? Yeah, he was an bo- abomination. Yeah. A mutant. Well, more of a <clears throat> mutant, mutant than we were. machine. Yeah, yeah, precisely. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty but cool. But it was great for me as the GM because it gave me a reason for you guys to go to places, you know. And it was like, you were like, you know, oh, you would ask. You'd often go to a new town and ask about the brother if anyone had seen it. And then every now and then you could go, oh, yeah, I think I might have seen someone there. Yeah, that was really cool because <clears throat> as the game went on, we were doing the main mission. But mm. every time I got to a new town, I'd quickly uh, do a bit of streetwise. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And try and talk to people and gather information, see if they've seen a man. And we'd get another clue. Mm-hmm. And it was unfolding as a uh, sort of subplot as the game was going on Precisely. it was awesome yeah and that's it and it's and yeah like i said gms will love you as players give them tip bits and they will absolutely love you for it yeah i mean there, there are ways to kind of do that badly as well but i i think just just follow that advice and and it'll be good because mm-hmm. you create a better story together your character will have something to do as yeah. well yeah um you're not just this penniless hobo going to saving the world for some reason Precisely. yeah no one knows why yeah exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, also, I wanted to talk about downtime as well, because that's a thing that I think you can really have a... It's basically, that's a chance to roleplay. Mm-hmm. A lot of people in, in, say, for example, D&D, right, they'll go, they'll go out adventuring, and then the downtime is literally them going to a shop, selling a, uh, like a wagon load of swords that they got from, <laughs> from like, a, an enemy, right? <laughs> yeah. And then and then you also you also pick up any new items you want, or yeah. you replenish yeah. your, uh, your arrows or your oh, dynamite God, or whatever. yeah. And what I tend to, th- what I think is a really good way of actually having some character building is when when you do get back to town, if there's five players, right, have go off with your best mate in the group yeah. and go and have a beer and talk yeah, about your something. past. I mean, yeah. as much as I despise Critical Role, one of the cool things that they do do is the characters ask each other questions during downtime. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they'll be in a bar. And this is probably the best part about it because the story's crap. But they, they, they could be in a bar and one character would be like, "So I heard you're from the Sword Coast. What goes on there?" Tell me more. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then it'll be like the two characters have this chance to role play. So during downtime, try that out. I mean, it is more of a tip for getting other people to role play. Yeah. But why don't you Why don't you go around town and try and try and uh, just say like, "Oh, I want to go to a titty bar or whatever." Yeah, precisely. And I'd just, say I'd say downtime is an intrinsic part of our group, especially. Yeah, we totally. love a bit of downtime. Just splash water on my own <laughs> really? face. On my own face. On my, on my own face. <laughs> so um, slap their own face. <laughs> I remember, I remember when uh, in the Warhammer, for example, mm. I wanted to. We we all had a downtime and we got to play a scene each, oh, where right. we all split off when we got back to town. Yeah, and my character was was naive to the point of probably retardation. <laughs> 
um, <laughs> to the point where her husband was a necromancer and she didn't even know. <laughs> Dreadlord Lenny. Yeah, yeah. Lenny. And, and the way <laughs> she had a D10 in fighting, but the way she fought was she would always hurt people by accident. It was cl- clumsy fighting, wasn't it? Yeah, it, was so, like a, it was like a carry-on film or a, or a loaded weapon. Exactly. Or whatever, so yeah. I remember the first battle we ever had, I um, the way I trapped my that I was hitting somebody was that I bent over to pick up a coin. My sword on my hip got stuck That's into a, a, a table, a table yeah. and then I spun around. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking loads of people out in the bar. And then she was like, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Whoopsie, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, anyway, so the downtime, when it came to it, I wanted to do something that further showed quite how dumb this woman was. <laughs> and so she went to a play and this is, I just nicked it from Blackadder, but she went to a play and she believed what was happening oh, on stage yeah. was real. <laughs> And then, and then, obviously, the uh, one of the guys got murdered on stage, and she was like, "Arrest that man! <laughs> He's been murdered! He's been murdered! Get him!" And she didn't she get her sword out. She's like, "Well, if no one's going to do anything, I have to step in or I, something." I don't know I if I did that, now. but I remember I, I definitely yelled out like that. And that yeah. was my downtime scene. I went to see a new play. I think it was called <laughs> "Dude, Where Art Thine Horse and Carriage?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I recall correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Which is dumb, but anyway, that was a, it, it. Used downtime to just further your character. Absolutely, yeah. yep, yep, precisely. And what about interludes, Nick? Are you a fan of these? I love them. I absolutely love an interlude. It's kind of another way of doing downtime, but in Savage Worlds, well, it, put it this way. Again, I'm going to reference Deadlands because it's the the most recent thing. But yeah, there's an actual thing in the book where where Roland is a is a gunslinger. A gunslinger is more of a. Um, but it's like a knight. You yeah, know, precisely. You know, yeah. in medieval times, our knights were also trained to farm, to cook, things like this. Mm-hmm. Gunsling is a whole lifestyle yeah. in, in Dark Tower. It's yeah. not necessarily just you you, you can shoot. Good shooting, yeah, precisely. And part of that is is that you have a quartet, which is like a uh, like a group of, of like-minded family. individuals. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and they're supposed to become a family That's and it. like a troop, right? Mm-hmm. And to connect further, what you do is every night when you make the fire, you go around and tell stories about your past and mm-hmm. you talk and they call it palaver. Yeah, palaver. Um, so, yeah, essentially in Dark Tower, it's really easy to do the interludes because in Savage Worlds, they have this thing where you deal a card and based on the uh, the fate... And based on the suit, mm-hmm. it, it say tell a story about when you were especially courageous, yep. or, or when you lost something, or yep. when you lost something. Yep. Yeah, and you, the new ones they've got different options now, yeah. so you could actually have a downtime event instead and say what are you doing on the way or what. Ah, okay, yeah, which is kind of cool. Nice. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the good ways to role play an interlude and the bad ways to do it. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Well, often when I when I'm GMing, I'll go around the table and I'll say to people who wants to do an interlude. Mm-hmm. Only say yes, because people want to do it because you get a Benny for doing a good one, right? Mm. Only do it if you've got something ready, yeah. right? If you've got something in <laughs> yeah. uh, in your mind that you want to tell. Yeah. Because um, we've got, or, or, or you feel confident enough to improvise right there and then. Because <laughs> we've got like uh, these cards as well, uh, Wild West Countdown Deck by yeah. Richard Wilcock, and it's got these symbols on it. So now you've got 52 different possibilities, uh-huh. but you can interpret the symbol any way you any want. Any way you like, yeah. I've seen the grave on it. Once it was interpreted as the, the, uh, Jimmy and Bimmy, two of the characters, they said that their father was abusive and then that, that they, they fucked him up. Oh, that was because it. Because yeah, he, yeah. he beat up their mum. That's right. And then, then the next person got the grave card and he expanded on it and said yeah but when we got to our mum she was already dead oh, and it was shit. really yeah, really yeah. really horrible yeah but then the, the other day Ryan who's great at interludes he said yeah I'll run one I give him the card and it's got a picture of dynamite on it and he goes ah well I remember the time when wah, wah, hey wah, oh um. <laughs> he's just thinking for ages oh, yeah. and Sean did the same thing once we gave him the card <clears throat> and it was um, I can't remember what it was it was like a, a bicep or something that denoted str- strength and his interlude, his entire interlude was, I want to get more strong. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> oh, and everyone shit. around the table was like, right? What is this? <laughs> James's was great, though. He did a great one. He, he told a story about how he became a gunslinger. And he said that uh, he was praying when he used to go to church. And then he saw a vision of a demon <laughs> and yeah. uh, just on the floor. But, but at his feet, he just uh, there a bullet appeared. And he, he believed it was given to him by the demon. And he stopped believing in God and took up the gun. Instead. Yeah, he still holds the bullet now. Yeah, he's, got, that, he's got his special bullet. That was awesome. That was great. That was a really good interlude. So, yeah, if you want to role play an interlude, 
it's like saying I just want to be strong. I mean, <laughs> it was funny. It was funny as hell. But yeah, what you got to do is be ready. Like be ready like, for one. Maybe during uh, when you're not playing the game, come up with a few ideas for interludes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also you could build it up as well. So you, like sometimes I guess if you're put on the spot, sometimes you could be like, oh god, if you haven't got something pre thought of. But if you're doing a bit of a downtime situation anyway, as a GM, wrap it up round a fire. So or, or you know wherever. So like so say for example, say they're doing a bit of downtime where they need to go and do a few little bits and pieces. They've all done that. They've all kind of re. Uh, got back together again and they're about to bed down before they go to sleep do you remember often they go right well I'm just going to go to sleep then well have them all sit down together and then kind of bring it in and, it, and, and they might even just be doing a bit of role play talking anyway and then you can be like right this would be a perfect time for an interlude well, yeah I mean I, I often if you're if you're in a game where you don't have interludes as well I'll often have like an NPC share, share a story yeah, around the fire now anyway I think it's a great I think it works in any game system it because does. it really works for character building so now I just hand fist it into anything And additionally you could always just have like Roll a D4 and see which results you get. And yeah. then t- tell a yeah. story about that. Absolutely. Nice yeah. and easy. But they're a really good way to, to expand on a character and have something in their backstory. It's a good opportunity to make things up about your totally, character. Totally, yeah. If you, yeah, there might be a sister that you've never previously mentioned, but now you feel like you want to mention her. Or it might be, you know, like the bullet thing. The, the, bullet. De- the demon. We never knew that that's the reason he took up the gun. But now we know. And straight gun. away it's like, uh, right, so now put, a, put put pet bullet in your infantry. And James is like, oh, cool. And he's like, well, duh, you've made it canon. It's become real. So, yeah. you Exactly. You, you know. And little, like, obviously you're not going to get a super cool item from the back of it, but if there is a trinket that means something to you that you've told a story about, that will then come into reality. Absolutely. And you can put that in your inventory because you've told a story about it. So it's existed. You've just never known, like, the other players didn't know it was there before. Now it's now it's spoken yeah, about. It's like now your it? players decided to share Make it, it so now you get it out yeah, of your coat. Yeah, exactly, know? yeah. But, um, yeah, another one is have varying levels. Don't be one <clears throat> note, right? <sighs> I mean, right, yeah. if your character is evil... Like Luther, your one, mm. you know, there's there's so many layers to that character. It's not just that that he's evil. That's no. it. There's so many different different layers to him. He mm-hmm. also he's also a recluse. Mm-hmm. He hates people. He yeah. um, also eats and drinks a lot as well. And it's yeah. like all of these things they 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 roll into the character, and he's got all these other traits other than the main one. Yeah, sure. And the the thing is, that's sort of a tip on how to create a good character, but how to actually play it in the game is to just vary up the levels. Don't yeah, yeah, always yeah. have this one mode. When your character's tired, they may stop thinking about doing the evil stuff or they might actually stop giving a shit when they see yeah. that person with the abandoned wagon by the side of the road. They, it, You might be a lawful good character, but you could go... Oh, come on, there's too many bloody people this week. This again. <laughs> can we, look, look. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine. Come on, can we go? Yeah, 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 exactly. We we'll start with Luther. If... Um... When he's learning about people, because he doesn't know about people very well in interactions, because he's so antisocial through being a recluse, that he actually doesn't really get shitty, more kind of listens and asks questions. Like, oh, that's what a hug is. Yeah, he sees them as like an experiment. Yeah, precisely. Or, or, yeah. or a research topic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's basically it, man. Like, have varying levels. Definitely don't don't make a one-note character. I mean... So my character's got a funny voice. He has? Oh, great. Yeah, well done. <laughs> okay, it's like, what else? It's like, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, that that's a problem. Uh, it's something I I definitely struggle with to make characters that are more than what one note and to play them properly because they can start like that if you're struggling. But let them evolve. Let the don't 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 be like after the first session they shouldn't be one note. After session zero they shouldn't be one note. You should have had be able to have worked with them enough to give them a much more multi level yeah kind like of a three dimensional personality yeah, exactly yeah. Um, and also the very last one I wanted to discuss with you, Nick, was uh, role playing during a fight. <laughs> yes, I so rarely see this, right? Where people will react to getting hit, oh, or right. they'll they'll um, act in different ways depending on what's going on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If all of your mates are being jumped, you might start you might go crazy and yeah. start wading in, yeah. getting angry. Yeah. Don't just say I hit it with my longsword. No, 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 no. Say something. Do something creative. Even if you are just hitting it with the longsword, say say like. I, I lunge in angrily. I'm shouting. There's spit flying out of my mouth as I run towards yeah. the goblin and I try to slash its head off with one fell swoop. That's right. Imagery is so powerful, especially if you've got like you know we've all watched films, we've all watched TV shows. We know how to visualize cool stuff in our mind. It's fine. So, so by but by, by by giving that imagery to the rest of the the table, it just makes it so much more exciting. Be cinematic about it. Yes. You know? I mean, that's make something it a program. That, make it a film. Yeah. Well, I I learned mm. from the, the the actual plays that you and James do. We, you guys, kind of react to everything that happens in the fight because it's it's for sound effects yeah, to yeah. make it. But it really works when you're playing at the table. If somebody hits you in in the stomach, oh, oh you little fuck! 
oh, I can feel my dinner coming up. Oh, they'll be like, uh, oh, not right. They'll be like, right, I'm going to eat you. And you'll be like, on your round. Yeah, <laughs> on oh, your he, always, he always does that, man. We've got one player at the table, um, Ryan, and he's great at role playing during yeah. the fight because he, he reacts very emotionally it's to like what's going on. It's like he's in the fight for it really real. Is. Yeah. And it'll be like, an enemy will hit him and he goes, right, what I do is I turn around and I, I just I, I snap his head right off his fucking body. And, I'll, and we're like, Ryan, you, you, your turn's in three turns. That's mate. cool, but not yet. <laughs> yeah, he always does oh, that. Yeah, sorry. Oh. And he gets mad. What, what he always says is uh, after that, whenever he, this we've gone off topic a little bit, but whenever he, he says that, he goes, don't you fucking tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> He's a boy. So that's basically it. Nick, any final tips? Final tips, I would say, um, okay, well, well, yeah, so if you're playing a character, don't get too stressed about doing a voice, okay? I mean, it's great and it is very rewarding, but to start with, you don't, it's, it's, Try it, but don't try to do a voice that's so far that it's hard to keep up. Because I did it once. I tried to do an Australian accent, and I realised that I'm not good at Australian accents well, at all. In, in addition to that, um, I prefer a character that never uses a character voice. It's it's handy, but I prefer a character that just role plays yeah. well. Yeah. yeah even yeah. if you just um, even if you just come to the game and and you say. Well, I uh, I go up to the noble and I uh, say some, uh, and then you say what your character says, and my mm-hmm. character says this, and I'm going to use a bluffing check. I prefer that as long as you've got this really cool, well-rounded character to exactly. somebody that can do a voice. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. The Matt Mercer effect, you know, with Critical Role, that mm. has led to a lot of people that think the voices are what makes the defines characters. the character. But actually, no. some of the characters on that show are pretty shite, pretty shite, and yeah. and some of them are are good, but. It's not because of the voices. No, no, no. You no. know, um, if I think that's a very, very good mm. tip actually. And if a voice doesn't, and also another thing I found as well. I mean, I've started a character with one. Don't, don't be, don't be embarrassed in the first session when you're trying to get a feel for your own character and your voice changes a little bit. Because I've done it. I've started with how I thought this guy should sound, and after a couple of hours of playing, it's like it doesn't work, and I've changed it. No one else at the table is going to care. You're finding your feet. Once you've got it, don't worry, and you can change. If you started off with a super squeaky voice in the first episode, and the second episode you decided to drop that because a great rough voice works better don't worry yeah and you know what like yeah uh, nothing sort of breaks immersion more than somebody trying to do a voice and going oh sorry this isn't working yeah, just, 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 just carry on with it yeah, just yeah, fucking yeah. own and, it man. and you'll find it you'll find it and even if it's a, just a slight variation on your own accent fine I mean I I, I I just do a posh one sometimes that's a little bit deeper and it's very easy to do but, you know and, it, and it's fun but it's not that far removed from how I talk anyway like and voice you know tone wise if you can't nail the accent and you're trying to do a specific accent um more often than not you're either playing sci-fi or fantasy so yeah. so if your a British accent doesn't sound like a British accent well that's fine yeah, they probably right, don't have yeah. British accents in Precisely. space anyway yeah yeah don't look too far into it but yeah that's it definitely. yeah those are that's that's how to role play well we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. No, we're going to do some what that now. What that? What the hell is that, man? I, I, I don't know. What the hell is that? I, I don't like it, man. What that? Uh, what that, man? What that? Run away! <laughs> <laughs> what that? All right. So, in what that, I've made RPG... I call them I call them soundscapes, art. Uh, art. I've made some made some RPG noises. Okay. And uh, you've got to guess <laughs> you've got to guess what the RPG related thing is from listening to the noise. Okay. Right. So this is the first one. Here we go. That wall is different. Look at the it, pattern of the moss. It's not the I, same moss we saw earlier. It is. It's the same fucking wall. Look no, at it. What I'm that, saying is you no. Once, Look, I Shut said up. Early, no, because you Look, you early you, on, early, we, you we said were you wanted to go left, right. and I said go right. What did we yes, do? We went but, left. No, okay. And now <laughs> Look, where listen. We are. Do you know no, where because we are? you said you wanted so, to go so, towards so we're never the door. And I said to you, I told you, idiot. Fuck you. So I realise on upon listening to that that it went on a bit too long. I I am aware of that. Sorry. The only thing that I think that is is like in a party arguing, in a dungeon. Yeah, uh, I, I can't give you a point for that because it was getting lost in a maze. Or oh, okay. Yeah, getting right. lost. Yeah, I thought it was just a couple of characters popping off at each other because they're sick it's of walking close, down the close. same road. Yeah. That's funny. I like that. It's not the same must. <laughs> right. Uh, You're a fucking idiot. Here's the next one. The darkish green slime covered beast emerges from the darkness. His left hand holds a peach, while his right hand, using a knife, slices segments from the fruit. The monster, using the back of the knife, slips the segments noisily into his fanged maw. I knew you would come here eventually. It smiles wickedly as its vocal cords struggle to adapt to the common tongue. 
he drops the peach. It lands by his leathery feet, and then he lunges forward, knife in hand. I shoot it with my crossbow. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was shit role playing in a fight scene. Yes, well done. <laughs> or also a creepy pa- that sounded like a creepy pasta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should just do them. <laughs> That's brilliant. I shoot it with my crossbow. <laughs> I thought you was going to say with my long sword. Yeah, I. You know, after I recorded it, I realised it should be long sword because that's no, like great. that's associated with people with no imagination. Just hit it with my long sword. Do you want to play a human rogue with a long sword, please? <laughs> right, next sound. So basically, I was walking into the village, and this woman comes up to me, and she says, she says to me, she says, Oh, oh God, my legs! Oh, 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 wee. oh, oh ah! Oh God! (laughs) 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 That's someone falling down a pit or something. No, No. incorrect. That was uh, activating a trap. Oh, okay. Yeah, Yeah. I could (laughs) see. Oh God, my leg! (laughs) (laughs) I don't just like the idea that he's having a casual conversation while he's walking. So I told this guy, shut up. (laughs) (laughs) That's really good. I like that one. That's my favourite, I think. This one, uh, actually, I, I can't remember which one's the weird one. Okay. Well, they're all a bit weird. But anyway, next one. You're a bloody wanker. You're a wanker, and you can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I actually, for- I actually forgot I made that until just then. <laughs> you're a wanker. You're a fucking wanker. Someone right. getting shot at it can't be hit for whatever reason. <clears throat> no, you're wrong again. That, that was um, a taunt role. In ah, okay. You know, yeah, in Seven yeah, yeah, you yeah, get yeah. the taunt character just yelling things over a battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Just get your awake. Uh, yeah, fair enough. That's right. good. All right. The final one. Here we go. Please welcome to the stage a brand new rapper by the name of C. Okay. So, C, everybody. Get your boys out munchable right there on the spot like lunchables. And get your boys out we the all right there on the spot like cereal. Because boys like you trying to take a biscuit. Trying to bash me up, but you better not risk it. Think it's so bad. You... <laughs> <laughs> what the? All right. So, I'll, I'll, I'll allow you a bit of thinking time here. What's another name for a rapper? Artist. Okay. You have to make a guess. Oh, rapper. Uh, Come on. Oh, I don't know. Scribe? I have no idea. Okay. That was MCC. Oh, Mutical <laughs> Crass. Oh, for God's sake. Because he's an MC. <laughs> MCC. MC. Oh, wow. Very good. All right, that one, yeah. I, I admit that, that was one like was... the cryptic uh, question on a crossword. Yeah, that was, that was a bit too hard. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. I like that, though. That, very good. So that was what dat? The, uh, the trap form was my favourite. So I told the woman that I was like, uh, oh, my legs! <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, very, very good. Let's go for a break. Yes. So listeners, go on a break. Go on a break, man. That was good. I like that. That was funny. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to see which of our single monsters is going out on a date tonight. Because it is time for Monster Blind Date. That's right. Let's meet the singles. There is some light hammering going on upstairs, listeners, so yeah. if you can hear that. Apologies. Apologies. Um, but they're renovating. You know they've just finished renovating as well. Not the same but, people. Yeah, it's the same fucking oh, people, right? I mean, how long have I talked about this for in the podcast? It's been about Eight a year. months, a year. I think the guy broke up with his missus <gasps> after a few months of moving in, so now they have to re-renovate it so they can sell it again. Oh, my. Whoops. It's just a never-ending nightmare up there. It is. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, monster blind date. <laughs> This yep. this uh, segment, the way it works, if it's it's an English show called Blind Date, right? Originally, and um, presented by this Liverpool woman, no Scouse. That is Scouse. Liverpool. Scouse, yeah. Well, still black. Yeah, rest in peace. R.I.P. Yeah, <laughs> but she anyway. The, the, explain the premise, Nick. Uh, so Asala would come out and she would talk to uh, a a would be dater and uh, the uh, and then we would have a panel uh, like a like a big a screen yeah a big screen and behind the screen there'd be three potential datees and they would basically um, big themselves up and the lady uh, the old man would then pick out the three uh, who it was they'd reveal who it is and they'd be like well you know and they would uh, yeah she the the contestant would get to ask questions of the three exactly, people behind the screen exactly that yeah so but we're doing that now with monsters yeah so I'm I'm trying to find. <laughs> the monster to take out on a date and also I've got to try and guess which monster it is yeah. though they're behind the screen <laughs> I just would like to apologise for this before we even start because um, yeah good this is going to be tough, <laughs> be tough. 
All right, go. You go. Oh, yes. Hello, my name is Harrison. I'm 31 years old, and I'm looking for a hot monster to take me out on a date. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, I would, I would first like to ask, uh, my question is, what is your... I think we said this last time, but my first question is going to be, what is your favourite type of food? And I'll do that to monster number one. Uh, well, um, I would probably say living flesh. Right, I think I've got an idea as to what that monster might be. Uh, well, maybe. Number two. Um, yeah, same question to you. Um, it's very similar to the first one. Yeah, it is, but it's not. Um, I would say... I probably favourite food would be shite. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know of any good shite restaurants. <laughs> Number three, yours. Well, I would say my favourite type of food is anything I can stamp into a paste. Hmm. I haven't the faintest fucking idea what that is. All right, good. So, um... Okay, my next question. We're about to go out on a date. And you want to you want to prove to me that you're fun? What are we gonna do? I'll ask number three first. Well, if we was going to do something fun, I would say where well, we would probably go out and um, well, stump some stuff. Maybe some arm hoof wrestling would be nice. Um, I uh, maybe at a bit of an advantage, but still, it would be good. God, I really have no idea what number You're three not is. Get any of these? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Number two, same question to you. Where would you take me on a date? Oh, if we was going to go on a date, we would probably go to a large forest type area that has plenty of poo pats. Lots of pats. I'd take you on a pat party. <laughs> What the fuck? Is this a real monster from D&D? Because that's what... Yeah, oh they're, my... all from, they're all from D&D. But there's something about them. Mm. <laughs> I think they're probably all undead. No. Oh, my God. Okay, number one, please. <laughs> wow. I don't really move much, so... <laughs> I would say the date would come to me, but they would hear me... Lovely, they would get a lovely suntan, but also if they got too hot in the sun, I would call them down winky face. Okay, <laughs> okay. You know, I know which one I'm going to pick to go on the date. See, the third one is very stampy, <laughs> as, as is obsessed with stamping, and it has hooves. I know that. <laughs> I think the first one seems like the nicest, because I don't want to go to the shit party with the second one. <laughs> okay, yeah. But the first one can't move, so that is going to be a... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that even is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I'm going to try and... Uh, I'll, I'm taking number one out on a date. Taking number one out on a date? Well, he's taking... I have to go to him. You have to go to him, yeah. But I'm going to try and guess what they are. Go on, go on. Third one... Uh, I'm going to go... Uh, this is hard. No, I'm going to go for the second one. Okay. Second one, I think, is a mummy. <laughs> no. no, why would that have anything to do with shit? I have no idea. Tell me. You have to tell me. <laughs> a stench cow. Stench cow, that can't be real. Stench. Oh I may God. have googled the worst D and D monsters ever. And worst <laughs> monsters. Dick bunny. Oh no, I better not look at this don't list. Don't look. All right, uh, it's the stench. It's cow. the stench cow. The stench cow is a cow that stinks. If you can't already tell from its awful name, this monster is not very popular. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so the first one, I, th- I I was thinking some kind of undead. Yes, 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 yes. I give it, you that. Um, is that one a mummy? No. A gibbering mouther? <laughs> no. Oh, God. I'm not going to get this. Okay, I've had two guesses. I okay. Know. You'll know what number one is? Go on. Number one is a gilon. A uh, gilon. The gilon is a creature that lives in the desert because it's... Con- uh, because it- <laughs> The gilon is a creature that lives in the desert because it constantly has a block of ice forming around it. Thus, it needs to be in the heat. The monster is basically the equivalent of putting a zombie in a giant ice cube. So it's basically a, a frozen zombie that has to live in the desert. I think G- Gygax, he must have been on something, right? Look, it, it is literally that. It's just as... Fucking hell. The artwork is so weird. He's curled up in like a fetal position inside an ice cube, his head poking out. We'll put him on. We'll have to put him on. That is face. insane. And uh, the third one. And the final one. You might as well just tell me what it is. You're not going to get it. Uh, have you ever heard of a mauler? 
No, actually, I, I, I probably have at some point. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> it's just like it's like a lion's head with a sort of a a like feet all around it in like a three sixty position. <laughs> yeah, it's like so it looks like a wheel. Shit! Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. It's so weird. I don't even know. What this is? Does it roll? Yeah. Is that how it moves around? It just I rolls know. about like a it's wheel. It's really weird. I'm sorry. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. No, literally but we've learned something the today. worst monsters D and D ever created. It's so. fine. But I think we learned. We learned a lot today about the weirdest monsters. Don't go out of a stench cow. I'm going to put a gilan in my next game. <laughs> yeah, you need to. <laughs> All right. So with that over, we're going to play a new segment. Yes. RPG or beef? Oh yeah. You ready? <laughs> RPG. Ah. Or beef. I don't. I'm, I'm fairly certain this segment hasn't got me- much legs. Okay, that's all right. I, it's going to be I, one I, of our many segments that start off with a lot of, uh, but then fizzle out. There yeah, and um, I think you're going to see why almost immediately. Oh, here we so go. RPG or beef? I've got reviews from uh, supermarkets for beef <laughs> products, right? And then I've got reviews for RPGs, and okay. you have to guess: is it RPG or beef? <laughs> okay, fine, perfect. Number one. <laughs> I mean, you're going to see why this is a shit segment. Okay. Number one, very poor quality. It has absolutely no taste. Awful stuff. Gave it to the dog and even she left it. <laughs> is that RPG or is it beef? We'll go for beef on that one. Uh, yes, well done. <laughs> um, so was, she left it. That was a review for Sainsbury's Value Mints. Wow. Or as you Americans call it, hamburger. What? Yeah, they call mints hamburger. But hamburgers, what do they call hamburger then? Just a hamburger, I well, guess. Oh, come on, but guys. But it's like hamburger meat, I guess. Or is it deconstructed hamburger? Yeah. Oh, my God. Number two. I'm a fully grown adult, and I plan on decorating my desk with these. Excellent service and product. Is that RPG or beef? <laughs> I hope it's RPG. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got a bunch of steaks hanging around. Get that rig around these desks. Yeah, that was a, uh, for the D&D miniatures. Uh, ah, cool. Set, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, next one. I wasn't too sure what to expect, but I was pleasantly surprised. They are really juicy. Don't shrink much and not much fat came out when cooking them. I can recommend these and have ordered more. <laughs> RPG or beef, Nick? I hope it's RPG, but I'm going to go with beef. Yeah. Uh, um, see, this game was quite easy. That's the problem. <laughs> I was like, tr- books I was tr- and food aren't very really uh, That one was for steaks, as far as I'm aware. Or, okay. No, that was hamburgers. Okay. But the thing about it is, is that as soon as I did this, I wanted to find reviews that would be like ambiguous. Yeah. And I spent maybe an hour looking for <laughs> re- reviews of beef that could have also applied to an RPG. I'm wasting my life. It don't happen. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's, it's, it's not never happened there. once. It's not out there. Perfect. Arrived quickly. Fit through the letterbox. You get so many for such a bargain price. There really is no need to buy them from anywhere else. Also comes in a convenient bag. Beef. That I got you. That was RPG. Ah. That was a, a set of dice. You got me. Yes. Ah. Oh. Thought that was beef that had been ordered on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> and like, they're like, it fit through the letterbox. Brilliant. Because <laughs> that would apply to a lot of beef products. To be <laughs> exactly. fair. Ah, oh, you done me. All right, good. Well, at least at least it worked that one. It, it did, yeah. Don't be surprised, listeners, if RPG or beef never comes back. Aww. <laughs> Maybe we'll do it as a Christmas special. <laughs> we should do a big poll of all of our segments we've ever done and find out what who, who uh, what the listeners like the most. Oh, yeah, but you know they're going to say adventure call. I liked it when you did the prank calls. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> we'll do a Christmas special and we'll go over we're all trying, the old stuff that we did. We're trying a little bit to be slightly more highbrow yeah, than we're we were to grow up. We're trying to grow up, listeners, and we're trying... We're hoping that you're growing up with us. <laughs> That's why we've got RPG or beef. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to some <laughs> electro letters. Day. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, actually. In the future, you will be able to send a letter or parcel from anywhere on the planet. This, sir, is the electro letter. So, yeah, <laughs> this time on uh, Electro Letters, we asked for your general questions as well as your RPG horror stories. This is like, it's not like as in I played Call of Cthulhu once. And it was really scary. <laughs> it was really <laughs> scary. This is more like like the the worst things that have ever happened to you. And yeah. Like t- horrible stories from your role playing experiences. And um, let me tell you, this, these are fucking good. But some of them are quite long, so just 
strap in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Robert Woford, first time emailer, he says, The summer before my gaming group broke up for college, one of the guys ended up attracting the attention of the police on his way to my house. When the officers showed up at the door and discovered we were playing D&D, they pulled us all outside separately to take our names and what characters we were playing. Oh, fucking hell. This was at the end of the 1980s, and just our luck, we got the head of the Satanic Crimes Unit as one of the officers looking into the dangerous driving of one of my friends. Oh, fucking So as far hell. as I know, we're, we're all still on watch list for the town. Oh, my God. Yeah. What are you playing? Well, I'm playing a bard. So I, I imagine they were probably like, oh, God, those guys are conducting some sort of ritual in there. What are you? I'm a cleric. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> we're, we're fucked now. Mate, I'll never forget that episode when we looked into that and some of the people were like, they're, they're conjuring demons. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with people, man. But yeah, so so he got the head of Satanic Crimes Unit. Wow, I wish you'd sent that letter in on our Satanic Panic episode. Yeah. <laughs> Next one comes in from Victor Ulansky. One of my first GMs in Werewolf the Apocalypse was eating while Describing scenes to our playgroup. <laughs> and I'm talking about large sourdough buns with only one slice of ham inside. No butter, veggies, or sauce to down it. You can imagine the sound. It became so obnoxious that we started to write short messages to one another and pass them around the table. He intercepted one of our notes and the campaign ended after only one session. <laughs> so, one go, right? I'm going to your bar and you're you saying, I'm like, imagine. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, hold on. What the fuck does that note say? Like, I'm sorry, the GM's drop. dick. Right, right, I'm running out. Right, I'm out. Give me my sandwich back. And he's screaming loads of bits of sandwich. <laughs> <Food's going everywhere. laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, when someone eats a Weetabix with no milk or anything as a challenge. Have you ever seen someone try oh, to do God. that? Because they're so dry. It's like that, but ooh, just bits of dry ham flying out. Yeah, Ugh. I mean, we used to have a player like that at the table. We, had to, we kicked him out of the group. It was something different. But <laughs> this guy, this guy who came to our games, I'll, I'll, let's, I'll give him like a, a, a fake name. Timothy. Uh, let's call him Timothy, right? He used to he used to eat crisps and he'd get a, a big handful and he'd shove them in his mouth and then you'd hear them all crunch down but he'd, he'd be such a big handful be like <laughs> and do you remember I used to just look at him and go fucking hell Tim I was like oh I just said his name <laughs> you have to bleep that I'll bleep Tim that. little Tim I was like Tim can you fucking shut up <laughs> the amount of times it would be like this really emotional scene in Gen Lab and he'd be like <laughs> right in the middle of it it's fucking horrible <laughs> oh dear Tim- oh. Timothy Pierce got a good one. He says, yeah. During a con game of Star Wars RPG, the original D6 system version, the DM spent a total of an hour describing this hyper-muscular, four-armed, nude alien species. <laughs> By the time he'd finished talking about them and their homeworld, we were to leave said homeworld and not come back to it. <laughs> With that, I stood up and left the table and moved a single table over and played Warhammer Fantasy RPG instead. Good choice. <laughs> and God, this, this alien, he's all buff. He's all big and buff and... You know, it might have been Byron Hall because he's like, he's big, he's buff, he's got his arms, but now we're moving downwards towards the nipples. <laughs> the nipples, a... they're very, very highly detailed. Let me Sensitive. tell you about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I'm going to play a jingle now because we're going on to one that's a little bit serious. So we'll, we'll get into serious mode for a minute. So, Louis Pineda, he comes in with uh, uh, one and he says, This is a long time ago, and the horror unraveled slowly as more information was uncovered. A woman I was dating told me her brother games and asked if we could invite him to the group that I ran. We'll call him C. The host of the game's wife and I are in the same career field and even had the same anatomy and physiology classes in college. We'll call her T. Turns out the new guy knew the host's wife and had tried to come on to her multiple times in the past, very creepy, almost stalking kind of way. I did not know this. We were adults about it and seemed to be no problem at first. Over time, the creep factor of the guy kept ramping up in our game and how we would interact with the females in our group. The girl that played a character called White Shadow said he came onto her when they both went for a cigarette, even though she made it clear she had a boyfriend. I had a word with him, then T stopped gaming with us. I thought it might have been the settings we were doing, but no, apparently she kept running into him around town. Eventually, the creep factor got beyond what anyone could tolerate. I disinvited him from the group. I was still dating his sister, which made that awkward. She is no longer with us. She took her life a couple of years ago after someone found the messages on our computer. It was clear that he had attempted to rape her, his own sister. Turns out he had attempted to rape several women in the circle of acquainted people, and everyone was too afraid to say anything. My heart still hurts that I didn't pick this up sooner and did something to stop it. Last I heard, he joined a group of travelling hippies, and no one has really seen or heard of him since his sister passed, not even his mother. 
I regret turning a blind eye to this, and I always regret not being more aware of the body language of discomfort when females played in my groups. Wow, okay. I did ask Lewis if he was okay for us to read that out, because yeah. it was really quite serious. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, his, his response was that he thinks it's important to read out because uh, of the certain way that women get treated in this hobby. Fair play to And him. I probably would say, it, it, I've heard from a lot of women that that is a common thing. Not not like the, to that level, but the way people creep on... Creep on ladies and, when yeah, they're at because, the table. What's the matter with these people? Well, it's because they're, they're just recluses and idiots oh, that don't know how no. to do it. I mean, let's be honest, most of the people we play with... Uh, nerds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're not used to that type of interaction. They and that guy just sounds like a horrible person. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah so yeah. I mean, what I would say, you know, to anyone listening to this is that if there is somebody and you notice any discomfort at some uh, at your game or whatever, or just in general, mm-hmm. try to speak to them about it and get and try to get them to open up and speak to them because it, obviously it's really a fucking important yeah, definitely. Because you don't I mean, want to end up with something like this happening. No, not at all. And obviously, if you're the person that's receiving that creepiness and that, speak to, and you're you're a player, speak to your GM. If there are any type of GM, they should understand and be able to do something about it. Absolutely, because uh, that's horrendous. That poor person. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I'm okay. very sorry to hear that, Lewis. Yeah, me too. Sorry, Lou. So uh, we'll. I'll I'll play another jingle so that we can go back and uh, into a less serious mode. Gotcha. Okay, good idea. Let's go. So, um, yes, one of our favourite things is the medieval blood sport. Cockfighting. Well, that was it for the uh, actual horror stories. We've got a couple of uh, ge- general questions as well. I have to say, uh, bloody good emails on the horror stories. Yeah, that very one good. about the sourdough. That <laughs> killed me. It scarred me for life, man. <laughs> notes around the table. It just reminds me of. <laughs> What's that boat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that they were passing notes, man. That's <laughs> genius. Yeah. But we got a general question from Timothy Peer. Have you guys read the Baltimore comics? I can recommend them. They're great horror action. Oh, no, I haven't heard of them. No, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that. For Baltimore comics, yeah. Baltimore comics, yeah. Con- yeah. Okay. Conrad Erasmus Neubert. Do you ever play the battles really drawn out and in tactical detail, or is combat for you just a break as short as possible from role playing, meaning playing your roles? All of the above. Yeah, we. D- it, it really depends on the fight. Sometimes mm-hmm. you need a big drawn out one. We've had a whole session and a half that was purely combat. Yeah, and and sometimes you need that if it's a big tactical situation yeah. where every move will count. And especially if the party has been building up to this point for a long time and a lot of preps got into it, you've got plans coming out of the arse, you know, you really want to give it justice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the thing is, I try to make the combat like evolve and change as it goes on to keep it exciting yeah but um in regards to something like rap for example um combat in in that is thankfully quick yes because because it's dcc yeah 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 it makes for bad listening (laughs) it makes for bad listening just rolling and rolling rolling. around i mean the the limp biscuit know that (laughs) very well (laughs) they're very big rpg fans you better back up back up exactly but the thing is yeah i don't know it depends it's different uh situations different needs yeah Yeah. absolutely absolutely so don't yeah yeah keep it fluid keep it fluid but Mm -hmm. yeah long combats are sometimes necessary and they can be fun as well they can can, yeah i mean we had one with with deadlands recently with where they these guys were trapped inside with two were snakes and a were panther mate that was nuts and that was a great combat it went on for a while but it was yeah it was deadly and, and really fun you really good fun, yeah. So, uh, next one we get we got an email here from Uncle Jay, and mm-hmm. he says, "I prefer to compose my electro letters to you via MeWe. I was an email; it was on we, MeWe, because I like documenting how thoughtful my messages are to you before you destroy them with your British snark. <laughs> I come to you seeking knowledge. After our five E campaign is completed in a couple of months, it will be my turn to GM. Ooh. And after overhearing your Deadlands Dark Tower stories, I now know, I know now what I must run." My friend and I are huge Stephen King fans, and Dead da- Deadlands Dark Tower seems to encompass all the things we would enjoy. Hell yeah. So would you perhaps have any insight into how your game is run, and what all do you include to from Deadlands into the mix? Okay, the last bit was written very badly there, Jay, but we're going to answer the question. Um, so, uh, in order to, to make Deadlands Dark Tower, I kept everything from Deadlands in there, yeah. straight up, mm-hmm. because... The fate ships. The, the, fate is a very, very big theme in Dark Tower, yep. and as a result, fate yep. ships work. Um, there is a magic in Dark Tower, but it's obviously mostly sp- like spoken about, and supernatural things are all there. But it's low magic. Yeah, yeah. So the thing is, all I did was uh, keep Deadlands exactly the same, but but make it so that magic was a extremely rare thing. That's it. Yeah. Because in the books, you only really hear about it from you know Walter Adim slash yeah. Randall Flagg slash yeah. the Man in Black. Yeah. 
but also uh, in the prequel Wizard and Glass, mm. that's that's when magic is kind of more of a big deal. More prevalent then, isn't it? Yeah. So <clears throat> yeah, I would say yeah, just keep everything in there in order to in order to incorporate. It. One of the be- best things about Dark Tower is the is the sort of cameos and the way all of these worlds link together. And as I've said before, the most easy way to do it is to link your like worlds that the characters are familiar with. Yeah, if you're, yeah, yeah. If you haven't yeah. been playing with the group for long, make it properties that they enjoy or ones you like specifically. Or um, if you have been playing popular with, culture references, everyone loves one of them. Yeah, and the thing is, if you uh, yeah, if you if you if you've been gaming together for a long time. Then just make it all of your other games. Yeah, as, absolutely. As the, as the other worlds, and that is so much fun. Yeah, it is amazing. It was really good when you got like old references from old games that you completely forgot about, or an old character pops up. You're like, oh my god, this this can happen in this world. Yeah, that's one of the coolest things about. That's it. why it it's, works so it, well. I then, honestly think it's perfect. It couldn't be better matched for Deadlands. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the Dark totally. Tower world. It is absolutely perfect. And if you know you're Stephen King you'll know exactly what to do with it and maybe even go back and read a bit of Dark Tower just before Just um, that's what I did yeah, I, I've, I've audio been reading books on YouTube as well guys if you don't want to read it because it's a long old slog yeah well worth it though worth it way worth it but yeah the, um, well, the that's how was, that goes 100% I also in, in the book New York is, is a uh, really prevalent part of yeah. the setting yeah um, I've been once I don't know it that well so I changed it for London Easy. simple as that yeah, so do, do a it. city you know yeah. uh, or the city one your players are familiar with as well and that will kind of be fun yeah like because we for example in the book um, Eddie uh, is a he's trying to get these drugs through to uh, some gangsters in New York and he has to fly in and he's trying to take them I think I think that's how it goes anyway but uh, to save his brother mm-hmm. but what we did is we changed it for Dave the Rave who was a uh, character from uh, one of our previous games and he's flying into London to save his brother that's it, exactly from yeah. a gangster from another one of our previous games called Jimmy the Shoe and so yeah you can you can do that just find ca- equivalent characters yeah. equivalent settings and things like this and it, it all works I mean the point of it is is the multiverse thing and you're on the lowest one and sometimes because the tower's all fucked up the multiverse is going to bleed in yeah exactly and they cross over to each other mm-hmm. and all start all shit goes wrong and uh, yeah and you can pull any that's what make, gives you so much freedom in that kind of system because you can pull anything from anywhere and throw it into that world well because at the, towards the end as well you start to realize it's not just Stephen King properties but also um, most fiction yeah, is yeah, becoming yeah. a reality in in the uh, in midworld yeah and they visit they visit Oz and that's right. They, yeah. they go to uh, no, and then you see the Doctor Doom guys mm-hmm. and you Harry, know, Potter. Harry Potter snitches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so pretty much just take inspiration from anywhere, anywhere but make it want. grounded in Midworld. Yeah, precisely. And it will be fantastic. And let us know. Give us a play report on that because we'd love to know that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Out. And that's it for questions. I've got a little one little shout out. We've got a new member to to welcome to the fold of role playing. We have- it's a friend of mine's boy. Um, he went and played. So a friend of mine, Ashley. Um, he's he's he's. Uh, his boy Joey, he went and um, tried out a bit of RPG, and apparently he came back and declared to his dad and mum that he is no longer Joey. We will be known from now on as the uh, halfling sorcerer Arwan. So <laughs> big shout out to Arwan. Arwan, shout you out the to man, you, brother. And uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the uh, hobby, mate. And welcome. Well, Please send a. Is send he old enough to listen to this? Uh, I guess he's like late teens now. I think. Oh, god. perfect then. Yeah. I think he's a teenager for sure. Yeah, God, I, I think he is. Anyway, sorry if I'm wrong. If, if he's not, I'm sorry about the content of this show. Mostly. Yeah, I know his dad definitely listens. But yeah, well, I promised I'd do a shout out. So Arwan, welcome. Awesome. That is cool. <laughs> All right, let's do an outro. Yes. <laughs> So, um, yeah, before we give out the contact details, I want to shout out some other shows on the network. Um, first of all, I'd like to shout out the Murder Hobo Show. Oh, yeah. Which is really good. Uh, he reviews, he, he's now reviewing like uh, different RPGs and things. He just did a review on Fantasy Age, which mm-hmm. is which is really awesome. And I'd also like to shout out The Wild Die, which I'm going to be returning to. Oh. Um, I just did the most spicy review ever. Is it Costa del Spicy? It was Costa del Spicy, man. <laughs> the, I, I, I just, well, it was my return. I reviewed Frozen Skies, and I would honestly say it's the worst setting I've ever read okay and a lot of the um, a lot of the you know the listeners and things and the patrons man they're getting really annoyed and I was on the Facebook and I was like listen this did is you what... give reasoning though yeah of course I did well there you go then and, and, but the thing is is that I, I was on the Facebook and uh, I was talking about it and then obviously one of the first questions comes up is have you played it or read it and of course I have mm-hmm. and then all the people that were saying I think this review was unfair I don't think you were right I'm like have you read it no but 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 I will and I think you're I'm like you've read it and played it I've read it and you played it man you played in my game yeah 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 yeah. of course yeah well (laughs) it's unbiased isn't it you've got to be unbiased 
Well, yes, exactly. Well, I, I think that's a shame. Yeah, people said that I rejected the premise and blah blah blah, but it's not true. But anyway, I'm back on a wild die, so go give that a listen. <laughs> <laughs> and the shit storm has begun. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to get in contact with us, then uh, email us at three trpgpod at jamal dot com or gmail. <laughs> To anyone outside of Jamaica, <laughs> God, that's awful. <laughs> and uh, we're on Facebook, me, we all the social medias. Yeah. And if you want to donate to the show, if you think that we, um, if we put the cream in your coffee, go, <laughs> yeah. go over if to we Patreon. Put your ba- if we put the bang in your shebang. Exactly. Go over to Patreon and sling us a buck. Sling us a buck, yeah. We'd absolutely appreciate it. And if you feel like you don't want to donate monthly, buy our product, 78 Hamlet Happenings on Drive Through RPG. Thank Best you. thing we've ever done. Thank you. So, I've been Harrison Hunt. Oh, I've been Nick Lambslice. And remember that D20s are cool, but 20Ds, now that's a good time. Oh, yeah. See ya. Bye. Bye.